Hello friends, Sean here. Came back, it's winter time, bad nozzle checks. I'll show you guys real quick. Uh, you can kind of see, I mean, they're bad, right? It, and it's just like, I've gotten to the point now where I'm basically concluded they're always gonna be bad in the winter. It's just like, it's just how it is. So I thought I would give you guys a demonstration of my full setup process, expecting bad nozzles, right? So the very first thing that I do is I run the white ink circulation system. So I make it so that the white inks that is in the tubes, right, circulates through and I get fresh ink out of the tank that's been mixed up, right? The second thing after the white circulation system goes is I prime the dampers. Now I'm not priming the dampers because there's no ink in the dampers. I'm priming the dampers because I want to get fresh ink inside of them ink that's been mixed up okay and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna throw this ink away i'm gonna save it in this little cup here and put it here okay just do one pool each so a 10 milliliter pool for each of the dampers right i'm gonna stick it in here stick it in a small cup putting them back as I'm doing them, right, I'm pulling, okay, I'm getting some fresh ink. And then I'm gonna do the final, I'm putting them back as I go, because you don't want the manifold exposed to the air, okay? And finally, this one. So, if I already did a nozzle check and it wasn't good, at this point, I would run two strong cleaning cycles, if I, if I didn't already know what my nozzles were gonna look like, I would run two clean, strong cleaning cycles and then do a nozzle check, okay? Not three cleaning cycles, not five cleaning cycles, not one, I would run two, okay? Um, if they don't look good, then I would move to this next step. So the first step, I'm gonna separate the head and I'm gonna send it all the way to the left-hand side, which will give us a lot more room to work with, okay? And I'm gonna bring, take you guys over there with me. I'm gonna get some of my tools here. And we're gonna we're gonna go for okay guys we're back we did a little rinsing so now i'm gonna take my thing distilled water right i'm just gonna fill it up you know something like that all right i got my distilled water here i'm gonna disassemble it's nice to have a towel on hand i'm gonna get mine wipe your hands with it's hard to pull these it's hard to pull the dampers if your hands are wet okay like i say all the time make sure your paper towel strip landing strips are on place so that you don't drip ink into your ribbon cables just kind of put these aside for now okay disassemble your heating system by just lifting up if you don't have yours um this might be tightened down you just have to loosen these screws to get that up okay as always, the first thing we do is we pull up this way, okay? So I'm gonna pull up this way to get anything that's jammed into the screens up this way if possible. So I'm gonna pull up, right? And you can see all that, see all that pull, got out of all that white ink and chunks and stuff, right? I'm gonna do it again, pull up. And I might actually do this twice today. I, I usually only do this once. And this is the new process. Uh, I just do a quick flush, priming of white ink, start printing, do a nozzle check, right? So it should only take about 10 minutes. If, now, that I'm gonna be slowed down a bit by the fact that I'm kind of showing you guys and explaining it as I go. But really, you know, I did this the other day. This only took like 10 minutes to, from start to finish, do a flush, um, prime it with white ink, keep going. Okay, so here we go. So I'm gonna do the first one. Flush, I'm gonna flush the first damper on the right. I like to go right to left for some reason. I'm just gonna look underneath and I'm gonna observe what's happening and it all looks pretty clear. It looks pretty good. I don't see any areas that look like they're not passing ink. And like I mentioned in my previous videos, you only need to push until you start to get a stream on the bottom. And I have close-up demonstrations on some of my videos of what that looks like, okay? Like I have a video, it's called Full Manual Flushing Process, something like that. Or white, yeah, so that's, that's where you'll find that close-up of what it should look like. 
and how hard you should push. But basically, you should start pushing until you get like a like a shower stream effect from the nozzles, okay? And not harder than that. So they should have a stream. And I kind of pump it a little bit. Seems to help. One more. And now after I do this, I'm gonna do this what like two times each. And I may do a third for good measure. It depends on feeling. Okay. Now I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna pull up. So now that it's like semi-flushed and it flushed any chunky stuff out, it's good to pull it up this way. You know, there's screens in these heads. Okay, and they don't they only pass particles of a certain size. So if there's chunky stuff in there, it has a better chance of coming up this way than down. Okay, now I'm gonna do it again. One, two, three, four. Last one. This is all I'm going to do today. I think it's okay. Okay. Now I'm going to do white ink priming. So I'm going to get rid of my the rest of the water I have here. I'm going to put it in my humidifier just to get rid of it. I'm just going to give this a little shake out. I'm gonna prime my dampers again. And I'm not, I really don't need to prime them again necessarily. I just need to get, uh, hold on. For some reason, my, the suction on my powder shaker always seems to go on for no reason every once in a while. I might have a ghost down here, all right? I'm just gonna pull 10 additional milliliters out of each of these dampers. I'm gonna prime the white ink. The way I've shown you in my other videos manually. And I'm reassemble and go back and do a nozzle check. Like I said, it should only take you about 10 minutes. Um, and, you know, I don't know how long this video has gone so far. But it didn't, hasn't taken me that long as of yet. And I'm kind of going slow to explain it to you guys. It's been six minutes since this segment. Alright. Last one. Now, I've got one of this, my, my thing thing. Come on, there we go. Just gonna get it full of white ink. There, just gonna wipe the tip off, but make sure not to get anything funky on the inside of it, because you don't want to push that into your print head. I'm just gonna observe on the bottom, and then just prime the white ink, maybe like three milliliters each, each manifold. Push, push evenly. It'll be a lot harder to push this through. It's a lot more viscous than the water is, so you're not going to get a stream on the bottom, but you definitely want to saturate it as much as you can. Okay. Sorry, it's not pressing. There we go. And then the last one, I might go back and do a little bit more on the right hand side just to get rid of this ink. going to reassemble. You got to do the heater first. So the heater. Damper. It's, it's really drippy right now because it's 
a little looser because I just primed it. So just watch where it's dripping. Don't drip it on your ribbon cables. Okay, I'm gonna take it back. I'm just gonna run one cleaning cycle. Big reach. I'm going to wipe the bottom of the print head because it's just it's just covered in a ton of crap and I don't want to get it on my uh, thing. If I can help it, okay. Okay. Okay, sorry, I just hit on record. So I'm just gonna bring it back. Just press enter to bring it back. Make sure everything's clear. It's not gonna hit anything. It's going back. See my computer didn't even have time to, to time out. Clean head strong. Let this go through the cleaning cycle. Here I can give you guys a good time to give you guys a look at these nozzles or what they don't look like. See that? There's like 50%. It's not focusing. There we go. Really bad, really bad nozzle checks. And here it comes. You know, it's, it's essentially not even there. It's, and of course, CMYK perfect. So, we're gonna see, I hope this does it, man, I really do. It's not fun. So like, these are my conditions. And this warmed up, it was only like 61 in here. Now I have a full space heater here that's running 24 seven. And it still can only bring it up to like 61 degrees, this basement's cold. And then that's hurting the humidity, the space heater. So I got this thing running 24 seven and that's not, it can only bring it up to like third, high thirties, low forties. That's just, it's, it says 43, not cause I just touched it. That's not accurate. It's just that I'm nice and moist. All right, here we go. Moment of truth, friends. I'm gonna hit the test button. Hopefully this is, this looks good and good enough to print. Look at that, okay. You guys can see, so 100 time improvement. Still a little chunky here. This one's flawless. This one's flawless. This is missing a tiny section right there. Flawless, flawless, flawless. It's just missing a little bit, just a tiny bit. So I'm gonna start printing. Uh, that's good enough for me guys so i'm gonna start printing um i'm gonna watch the prints look for banding look for any potential problems just keep an eye on it right but you can see the improvement we made in 10 minutes time that's 10 minutes and i believe that the reason is number one i had mentioned in the past about air bubbles in your print head right or capping solution in your print head plus I think when you flush and then you pull back up, that's the most beneficial part because there's screens inside the print head before it gets down to the nozzles. And what those screens do is to make sure that no particulate passes through. I think when your head is sitting overnight, the heaviest stuff kind of settles to the bottom and it can kind of cover those screens. So when you push a little water in there and then you suck up, it brings all that chunk up out of there, a lot of it. So uh, 10 minute process. I just wanted to document it for you guys and my results. I've been documenting these like crazy just so we can get an idea of like what I'm doing, what's working, what's not working. Cause as you guys know, there's not a ton of information out there. Uh, hope this helps someone out there. If you need any help, give me a, let me know. I'm happy to help anyone out there. So have a great day. May all your DTF nozzles be completely clear. Goodbye. Okay guys, I always say goodbye, but then there's, I always show you the print. So maybe I'll try to stop doing that. You can take a look at the prints. I just want to show you guys my, I really don't have much banding, really none. Um, looks, looks pretty darn good. When you first start printing up here, you might notice that your ink's mildly watery, right? It's obvious why that is. I'm just gonna keep an eye on it with the lower humidity because once I get going, I get like, you know, 15 feet in or something. There may be some banding problems that start to, to happen. You can see 35%. So this humidifier is fighting the heat being put off by the powder shaker plus the space heater down here. So if you don't know, when you heat up, when you use a heating device, it pulls humidity out of the air. So um, 
that's 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 why it could be humidity is such a problem in the winter. Number one, it's drier than summer anyway. But two, it's the fact that your heating systems are taking all the humidity out of the air. So uh, here I go, guys. Have a great day. I think that's gonna be my new tagline. May all your dreams come true and may all your nozzles be clean. So, <laughs> bye.